Chapter 9, the final chapter. We're not going to do chapter 10, folks. We're going to do just long-lived assets. How do I report and analyze a property, plant, and equipment assets? All right, next this slide. We're going to describe how we use the cost principle in determining the total cost for plant assets. Then we're going to explain the concept of depreciation, and we're going to look at three depreciation methods. To begin with, there's two things in this chapter. One, determining the cost of plant assets. How do I come up with the total cost? It's not just what I paid for them. It's more than that. And secondly, how do I account for intangible assets or types of assets? But also secondly, how do I analyze how I use up the plant assets? Now, plant assets, plant, property, equipment, have physical substance. They are assets that are used in the operations of a business. That is, these assets I'm going to use up. I'm not going to sell them. I didn't buy them to sell them. I bought them to use them up. So, okay, so therefore they provide service to me or for the company for the number of years. The only one that is never used up is the asset called land. Now these assets, plant assets, are also called fixed assets. In our textbook, we call them property, plant, and equipment. Now the cost principle requires that we record assets at cost. Costs consist of all expenditures, cash outflows, that were necessary to acquire, to buy an asset, bring it to my business, and get it ready for use. Now some costs in doing that are called expenses, they're revenue expenditures. But some costs, I couldn't get, I couldn't buy this asset without incurring that cost, and they are called capital costs, or capital expenditures. Let's take an example, let's take land. All necessary costs incurred in making the land ready for its intended use. <clears throat> These costs would include the cost to purchase the land, the cost of closing and buying it and getting title and paying the lawyer's fees, also, if I have to pay a real estate person commission, and if there were some back taxes on the property that I have to pay before I buy it, all of that would be added to the purchase cost of the land. Assume that Hayes Manufacturing Company acquires real estate at a cash cost of 100000 The property contains an old warehouse that is raised, that means it's been torn down, destroyed, at a net cost of 6000 the net cost of 6000 is because it cost them 7500 to destroy the property, but there were materials that were left over that they were able to sell for 1500 So that's how they get the 6000 Additional costs are attorney fees of 1000 and real estate brokers fees or commissions of 8000 You are to determine the amount to be reported as the cost of land. Well, of course, the 100000 is in there. That is the cash price. Then I have to remove what was on that land, so that's part of the cost of land. Then I have to pay the lawyer and the real estate guys, so the actual cost of land is 115000 And that's what I would show as an asset on my balance sheet, land 115000 Now, if I went ahead and improved that land, this is a separate asset. It includes all costs to make the land ready for use. If I have to pave the driveway, if I have to put up fences, I have to put underground sprinklers, all of these things are expense and cost of land improvements over their useful life. Also buildings. If I buy a building, the true cost of the building is the purchase price of the building, plus the attorney fees and all of that, and again the real estate broker commission. And if I have to fix or remodel a building or replace part of the building's floor or roof or anything else, those are all costs that are not expenses in the year in which I did them. They are part of the cost of building. And if I buy and build the building, of course, all those costs are included in it. Equipment. If I bought a piece of equipment, I have to include all the costs. If I bought the equipment and the equipment is in Abu Dhabi, then I have to include the purchase price of the equipment, if I had to pay taxes on it, if I have to get a truck to go to Abu Dhabi and get it, that is part of the cost. 
If I have to pay the insurance uh, in transporting that to LA, that's all part of the cost of the equipment. And when I get it in and I get it installed and I test it and get the equipment up and ready to be producing, that all those costs are costs that should be included in the cost of the equipment. For example, this company purchased a delivery truck at a cash price of $22,000. Related expenditures, sales tax, $13,020. They wanted to paint and put their name on it, that's $500. Motor vehicle license is $80. And a three year accident insurance policy is $600. What is the cost of the truck? Now keep in mind the cost is what's reasonable and necessary. Well, of course, the cash price and the sales price and the lettering. What about the license? Well, you see, that's an expense. Everybody has to pay that motor vehicle license to drive any kind of vehicle. So that $80 is not part of the cost of the truck. It's a license expense for the year. And what about the insurance? Same thing. That insurance has nothing to do with the acquiring of the truck. It's once I acquired the truck, now I have to pay insurance. So that's insurance expense. And we learned that back on chapter two or three. Okay, but the painting and lettering is part of it because I have a business and I bought that truck and it's a delivery truck and I want to put my name on it. So that is part of the cost of the truck. All right. How would I record that journal entry? Well, debit equipment, 23820 that is the $22,000 plus the $13,020 plus the $500. Debit license expense, because it's an expense. Prepaid insurance, because it's an asset, but it's not part of the cost of equipment. And cash. That's how I would do that. All right. Now, we have the asset, and we're going to use it up to help us earn income. Well, when I use up a fixed asset, I'm using it up over a number of years. So I must allocate a part of the using of the asset to an expense every year and reduce the value of the asset. This process of cost allocation, okay, it applies to land improvement, building and equipment, but it does not apply to land. Depreciation, depreciable because its revenue producing ability of the asset declines. The asset helps me produce more revenue in its first year than it will in its last year. So therefore, we have a couple of actor, factors here in computing depreciation. One is the cost, and we just talked about the cost. All expenditures necessary to acquire the asset and make it ready for use. Then the second thing is how long is this asset gonna last? The estimated useful life is based on the need to repair service life. So this is an estimate, say five years. And at the end of five years, it's been used up. It's kind of banged up, you can see that. But it still can be sold. Somebody wants to buy it and maybe put it out on the farm and help them uh, out in the desert or something like that. So you can sell it. All right, so now the depreciation method. There are three. Now, you choose one of the methods that most resembles the way in which you use up the plant, the asset itself. One is called straight line method. Most people use that. Another one is called declining balance. And the third one's unit of activity method. Okay, first off, with an example, Bill Pizza purchased a small delivery truck. The cost, 13000 Okay. He's going to use it for five years. At the end of five years, he's going to sell it for 1000 He figures that in the five years, he's probably going to use up 100,000 miles. But he's not going to use 20,000 each year. He's going to use a portion. Compute the depreciation using the straight line method, units of activity, and declining balance. Well, let's do the straight line. That's the easy and simple one. The straight line is the expense is the same amount every year. Depreciation cost is the cost minus the salvage value. So the cost was 13,000 minus the thousand gives me the amount that I'm going to use up, 12,000. And I'm going to use it up over five years. So I divide five into 12 and I get 2,400 a year. So if I'm going to do straight line every year, I would debit depreciation expense truck, 2,400, credit accumulated depreciation, 2,400. 
like this. The appreciable cost 12,000, the rate is 20%, one fifth of a year. Annual expense, cumulative depreciation 2,400. What's left on the truck now is 12,006. So the second year, I make my journal entry then. The second year, I, annual expense 2,400. Accumulated depreciation now is 4,800, and the book value is 82. And we go through all of this, and you see the accumulated depreciation gets all the way up to 12,000, and the book value is 1,000 that is left, and that is what I'm going to sell it for, 1,000. So that's a straight line method. Okay. Um, now the uh, assume is purchased April 1st. This is partial year. Uh, we're not going to do partial year, so we'll just do that. Declining balance. It's an accelerated method. I take more in my first couple of years and less in my later years. It's double declining the straight line. So if I say the asset's going to use five percent or it's going to last five years, that is twenty percent is going to be used up every year. Well, in declining balance, what we do is we double that. Forty percent is going to be used up every year. All right, and we put it on the whole thirteen thousand. So we take the thirteen thousand, not the twelve. We multiply by 40%, annual expense is 5,200, accumulated depreciation 5,200, book value 78. My journal entry the first year is debit depreciation expense 5,200, credit accumulated depreciation 5,200. Now the second year I have 7,800 times 40%, 3,120, accumulated depreciation now. I add 3,120 to the five, 1,200, I get 8,320. My book value now, I subtract 3,000 from 7,008, and I get 4,600. Now, I take 40% of that the third year. It's 1,872, accumulated depreciation. I add the 1,872 to the 8,320, and I subtract it from the 4,680, and I keep going all the way down so that you can see that the book value at the end of the fifth year is $1,000. That's exactly what I'm going to sell it for. Now, the depreciation on the last day, I have 1685 as my book value. I don't take 40% of 1065 I know that I'm going to sell it for 1000 So all I do is I take the difference between the book value and the thousand I'm going to sell it for, and I use the depreciation to be 685. Okay. Now units of activity. This is a little different. It says, okay, you bought this truck. You paid thirteen thousand for it. You're going to sell it for a thousand at the end of five years, and you're going to drive for a hundred thousand miles. So therefore, the amount you're going to depreciate is twelve thousand. You're going to drive for 100,000 miles, and therefore you're going to depreciate at 12 cents a mile. So therefore, every year you look at how many units of activity were done that year. 15,000, and therefore you multiply 15,000 times 12, and you get 1,800. So this is how it works. On this case, they changed it from miles to hours. Okay, hours used, the rate, and that, that shouldn't be hours, it should be miles and rate. Or did it say hours? Did it say hours? No, it said miles. So that should say miles. Okay, 15,000 miles times 12, annual expense 1,800, accumulated depreciation 1,800. I subtract 1,800 from um, 13,000, I get book value 11,200. Next, that's my journal entry. Now, uh, next second year, I did 30,000 miles, 12 cents, annual expense, 3,600 in depreciation, accumulating depreciation. I add the 3,600 now to the 1,800, and I get that. And I subtract 3,600 from 11,002, and I get hopefully 7,006. Next year, I do 20,000 miles times 12, and so on. The next year, 25,000. And you can see that by the time I get to 100,000, I am down to 1,000 in left as the value of that asset. So there are the three 
depreciation methods. Straight line, double declining units of activity. So in this chapter then, you must focus on how I come up with the cost of the asset and how I depreciate it, okay? Shift F10. Shift 